Morning guys, welcome to, this is devotional number 34, can you believe it? And it will be our last Saturday devotional of lockdown. Some guys have said that Saturdays is a great time for them to have devotionals with, together as their families. And so we'll be doing from next week, devotionals from Monday through to Friday, and then obviously church together on Sunday morning. But we're still in 1 Samuel chapter 20. It's our last uh, devotional from 1 Samuel chapter 20 today. And we're going to be reading from verse 42. It says, Jonathan said to David, go in peace, for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, the Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to town. And today I'd like to talk about longevity. It's something that I don't know if it's always in front of us because we live in a culture where novelty is everything. And what I mean by that, um, the newest fad or the newest fashion is everything. Uh, six months and something is up, you know, the latest trend, the latest way of taking photographs, the latest fonts, the latest colors, the latest house designs and fashion and all sorts of stuff. Every six months or sometimes in, sh in a shorter space, the fads come and the fads go and they change. And in this text that we read, what David is saying and what and Jonathan are saying to each other, Jonathan talking to David, he says, I will be committed to you as long as we live, but not only as long as we live, but even as long as our descendants live, they'll be committed to one another. And David actually ends up living this out because later on in his life, when he's king, he goes looking for someone. And he says, is there someone I can show kindness to on behalf of Jonathan? And he finds this kid called Mephibosheth, one of Jonathan's sons, who's lame in both legs. He can't walk. And David invites him into his household and, and Mephibosheth eats at the king's table because of the kindness that David um, and, and or the relationship that Jonathan and David had experienced. And so David shows Mephibosheth kindness. And can I say this? This kind of thinking, I think, runs, like I said, in the face of this novelty of today's culture. If we think about even with this coronavirus and lockdown, there were some things which were very novel at the beginning. And, and can I just talk about church, for instance? Doing online church was very novel in the beginning and very exciting. But there's going to come a time where it becomes the norm and it becomes boring. Um, doing connect group. It was interesting doing it on Zoom. But now it's going to become a little bit easier just to say no and I'm busy and I'm not, going to, I'm not available. Everything is novel for a season and then wears off after a while. But what this text is kind of showing us is that there are some things where we need to make a, a commitment for the, longs, the long run. And when Jesus was asked, what are the most important commandments? He says these two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And for me, those are the two things that we can't afford to have this novel, you know, kind of uh, high peaks and low valleys and live this kind of life waiting for the next exciting thing to happen. Um, in Galatians 6 verse 9, Paul writing, he says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And so can I say this to the parents? Please, don't give up. Don't just, maybe it was novel at the beginning of lockdown to spend some more time with your kids. Please don't get bored and just settle into a rhythm where that thing gets pushed off to the side. Put the time in place to be able to do that. Um, perhaps it's time spending time with Jesus. You've got a little bit more time at home. Even if it's 10, 15 minutes, the time is not important. But maybe at the beginning it was novel and it was interesting. But this is where I'm going to, like David and Jonathan, I'm committed to this thing. I'm going to go as long as I can go with this thing. I want to go the distance with spending time with Jesus. I don't just want to have this peak of like it's exciting, it's different, it's new now. But then after a while it just becomes normal and I just slip back into whatever the rhythms are. David and Jonathan, they had to work at their relationship. When David went looking for Mephibosheth, he had to go looking. It was an active thing to live out something. He didn't have to. No one was checking up on him, but he'd, he'd, he'd made a commitment that this was something that he was going to go the distance with. And can I encourage us that with our relationships with people, when it comes to encouraging others, when it comes to our interaction with the church, and when it comes to reaching out to other people and, and living out our faith, I, as time goes on, I think the pressure at the moment in, in society, especially with lockdown being extended in a, in a way in these different stages, the pressure is that we just, uh, and I just fold and I just pack it in and I just keep going, doing what I have to do until everything goes back to normal. But there's an aggression or a, a pushing outwards and going, no, I'm not just going to wait for the next novel thing to come along before I get excited. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that there are some rhythms in my life, 
my relationship with Jesus and my relationship with the church and my relationship with others that I'm going to prioritize and put in place, that I'm going to actively put these things in place because I want to go the distance. I don't want to live my life like this on some sort of yo-yo. And I know that because I, I tend to be someone who's always chasing after the new and just putting the rhythms in place, even doing these devotions each morning has been so good for me. Just each morning, taking the time, getting into God's word. Lord, what are you saying? What can I take into my life? When I'm feeling anxious and when I'm feeling stressed out about something, not living with that stress and living with that anxiety, but taking it to Jesus and pray, Lord, I need to leave this with you. I can't afford to be carrying this around because I don't have my usual coping mechanisms. And just making sure that there are other things which are novel and interesting and my new series that I'm watching on Netflix, perhaps, and uh, new TVs, whatever, whatever the, the new novel thing is that we do. Maybe it's a new hobby that you're working on. Let's not let our relationship with Jesus and the church be one of those. Let's make these things blocks in our life that we are committed to and I can put them in place for the sake of ourselves, for the sake of those around us and for the sake of Jesus as well and our love relationship with him. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. We'll be doing the Zoom webinar church thing as well. I'll give you a bit more details about that this afternoon. Thanks so much for joining today.